Hi everyone, this is the second part. We will continue after solving this one before the break. We will continue with the next one. So the question is, find the volume of the solid generated by revolving the given region bounded by this curve line about, okay, there are different axis options here. Let's solve all of them, okay? Let's start with A. Let me first try to draw the given region. Okay, so X, this is x-axis, this is y-axis. y equals square root of x is such a curve. y equals two is this line. This is two. This is y equals square root of x. x equals zero is y-axis, right? So the region is in fact this part. Now we want to revolve this region around x-axis in part A. Then what we will obtain? After you revolve it around x-axis, some three-dimensional object like this occur. So we will slice this three-dimensional object into vertical cross sections like that, right? Vertical cross sections. And as you all notice, it, they are not whole disks. There is a big empty hole inside our three-dimensional object. So the cross-sections are rings, not disks, but rings. Okay, so these rings are what we are interested in. Now, I need to compute the inner radius and the outer radius of it. Let's uh, indicate this point as an arbitrary x. This is the inner radius, right? our inner and it is given by the curve okay so our inner is exactly given by this curve so it is square root of x what about outer radius so from center we go all the way to this line right this green line is the outer radius that we search for it is always two you can check this, like no matter where you draw your these rings here or here, the outer radius is always determined by this line. It is always so. So let me remove those extra rings. Okay, outer radius is always two. Now I am ready to compute, to construct the volume. Volume is A of X, DX, Y, that's, sorry, dx, y dx, because our rings are moving towards x-axis. And now you need to look at the x boundaries of your region. By the way, if this point is two and the curve is square root of x, this point should be four, right? So the boundaries of the integrals is from zero to four, okay? And the area of the ring goes like pi, outer radius minus inner radius dx from zero to four again. So let's insert outer and inner radiuses. Outer radius is always two and inner radius is this blue line given by the curve. So square root of x square. The boundaries are the x boundaries, okay? So integration is with respect to x. So everything should be expressed in terms of x to compute the volume by using motion method. So that's part A. Now let's talk about part B. In part B, we will rotate the same given region. Okay, let me draw the region again for part B. It is such a region where this curve is square root of x, this is point two. Okay, they intersect at this point for on x-axis. Now we will rotate around y-axis. This is the shaded region. If you rotate around y-axis, you'll obtain something like this. So this time, we will slice this three-dimensional object horizontally. Okay, these are horizontal cross sections. Let's uh, mark this as an arbitrary point y. Then, this is the radius of this disk, right? There is no empty hole inside or something. This is full disk. 
So to find the radius of this disk, you need to concentrate on the, this point on the curve. So what is the exiting point of this uh, point on the curve? So you need to solve x in terms of y here. x is y square from this equation, right? x is y square. So this is our radius in terms of y. Why we need to express everything in terms of y here? Because to compute the volume, we will do a of y dy as the disks are moving through y axis. And this will be the y boundaries of dy from zero to two, okay? Everything should be in terms of y as the disks are moving along y axis. So we have zero to two pi of R of y. R of y is computed as y square, right? y square. You put another square for the radius, pi radius squared, and then rewrite the boundaries like that. So this integral will give you the volume of the three-dimensional object that is obtained by rotating this region around y-axis. Now, Part C. In part C and D, we will rotate around different uh, lines like this one and this one. So in some questions, they say like that. Not they they don't put x axis or y axis. Instead, for example, in part C, we will rotate around y equals two line. Let's do that. Part C. This is the region. Sorry. I'm going to draw it again. Okay, this is point two. This is our shaded region. And this is y equals two line. So we will be rotating around this line. Now, that's why you should use your imagination to uh, see this three-dimensional object in your mind, right? If you rotate around y equals two line, Something like this will happen. So this time we will be using, again, vertical disks to cover the whole volume. So let's name this point as an arbitrary x. So the volume goes like a of x dx because the disks move along, along or in the direction of x axis, every, everything should be in terms of x. What are the boundaries? of this region, you know, we already know that, know all those details. From zero to four are the boundaries of your integral. Now, A of X, the array of the disks, should be expressed in terms of X. What is the radius here? This is the radius of these disks, but I need to express it in terms of X. How can I do that? Maybe it will be a better, right? Okay, let me. Draw it again. <laughs> yes, yeah, so let's work on the region, I mean, this, on the shaded part. You know, concentrate on this point, please. This is a point on this curve, where this curve is given by y equals square root of x, right? So the exiting point of this thing is, I mean, you don't need exiting point. It is already marked as X, but what I mean was this height is given by the curve, right? This part is exactly square root of X because it is on the curve. And you know, this from here to here, it is of length two. That's why the radius is what remains, right? Two minus square root of X will give you the radius. So this is the radius. It is this length minus this length. So two minus square root of X gives you the radius in terms of X. So let's insert this. Pi two minus square root of X dx from zero to four. Okay, so that's how you should work with the figures. You should um, just try to see what you need to find and you can easily find the required lengths by using the given curves. Okay, so finally in part D, we will rotate the given region
around x equals which line? I guess x equals four line. Why? Okay, so part D. Let me draw the same region, square root of x, y equals two. This is the shaded region. Remember this point was four. Now we will rotate around x equals four line in part D. This is what is asked there. Okay, so after doing the rotation, I need to draw this metric picture. We will obtain something like this, right? So uh, to cover the volume of this thing, I need to use what kind of things? This is the axis of rotation. And be careful. The centers of your disks or rings, whatever you use, the centers of them should be always on your rotation axis. Okay, this, so this is the center of my slices. That's why I understand how to draw them. You see, I draw horizontal rings. And look at this part. You see, the center is always on the axis of rotation, always. And that's, that helps you to understand how to draw your slices. So this is our slice now, cross section, like this one. Okay, now I will try to express the area of it in terms of, so this time the um, slices, these cross sections are moving along Y axis, moving along vertical direction, right? That's why uh, we will construct the volume with respect to dy. Okay, so let's start computing inner and outer radius. From here to here, okay, from center to here, this is inner radius. And uh, to, to find the inner radius, this curve is important, y equals square root of x. So um, let's try to find out the x hitting point of this point on the curve. So you can easily solve x in terms of y here. It is y square, right? So this point is y square. So um, this is not our radius, be careful, but we will use it to find out the radius. From here to here, it is of length four, right? And from here to here, we see that it is y square. What remains is this part is in fact our inner radius. Inner radius is four minus y square, right? And the outer radius, let me draw the outer radius uh, in green from center to all the way up to here, up to y axis. This is the outer radius and it is kind of fixed because this line is x equals four line, and no matter where you draw your slices, the outer radius is always this much. It's always this much. Outer radius, which is fixed as four. So let's insert these details to the integral. Pi are inner radius, outer radius minus inner radius. Outer is the bigger one, Inner is the smaller radius, take the square, take the difference, and look at the boundaries on y-axis, as I already indicated, the boundaries on y-axis is from zero to two, where outer radius is always four, and the inner radius is here, right? We computed inner radius here, four minus i square. You know, this is the whole part, we subtract this part from four. So four minus y squared, squared, of course. So this integral will give you the desired volume. Okay. This is sound very good. So any questions on this example? Okay. If no questions, I guess this is enough on Voucher method. Maybe I can just emphasize that everything is with respect to y here, boundaries, 
uh, expression for the radiuses, everything should be with respect to one. And why boundaries is here? Um, wait, I think I chose the wrong color to emphasize. Let's choose yellow because the interval is indicated as yellow, right? Okay, so that's it. Let's use the remaining time to cover cylindrical shells technique. This technique, as I said before, is completely different than disc or washer method. We will be using a different idea here. Let me show you the idea from the lecture notes. There was a very nice picture there. Yes, look at this picture, please. So there is a three-dimensional object of which we, we want to compute the volume. Instead of, okay, consider that, let's assume that this is the same three-dimensional object. Normally we would use the uh, horizontal disks, for example, to compute the volume of it, right? We, we would slice it. But now we will use a different idea. This is a cylindrical shells technique. Cylindrical shell method. Instead of slicing it uh, into disks, now we will be considering all those very thin cylindrical shells. You see them, right? So by uh, covering from inside to outer parts, by surrounding those shells, like infinitely many, like seen in the picture, we will try to cover the full volume. No discs anymore, no rings anymore, no slicing, totally different idea. We will divide the volume into infinitely many cylindrical shells like that. So if you consider just one of them, okay, just concentrate on one of very thin cylindrical shells like this one, cut it up. Okay, let's draw a scissors here. I cut it up from this uh, along this height, then I will obtain a rectangle. And if I integrate the surface area of this rectangle, what happens? So the surface area of, the, of this rectangle is 2 pi rh. If I integrate this surface area, 2 pi rh, through x-axis or y-axis, it will depend on the question, what happens? This integration is a continuous summation, right? Integrating the surface area of this rectangle means that you are summing up the surface areas of all those rectangles here. And of course, you will end up the whole volume. That's the idea. Okay, this is the idea. Let me turn back to problem solving template. Now we will be using that very particular idea, cylindrical shells method, to compute the volume described in the first example, okay. So here we are rotating the given region around y-axis, which will result in such a three-dimensional object, okay? So we will divide this three-dimensional object into very thin cylindrical shells like that, just like I explained from the lecture notes, okay? So these are our cylinders. Okay, uh, let me indicate this point as an arbitrary point x on the x-coordinate, which is in fact the radius of our cylinder, right? And this is the height. Let's take this cylinder here, concentrate on it. It has a radius r, height h, and now let's cut it up like this. If I cut it up, this blue part will is, is the diameter of this circle of radius r. So the diameter is two pi r that will correspond to here, right? This length of the rectangle and h is again at the same plane. So the surface area of this rectangle is crucial for us surface area of this rectangle is, it is computed as 2 pi r h, right? 2 pi r h. So if I integrate this uh, area, 
along x-axis from 0 to 2, this is the interval of integration, I will obtain the whole volume. That's the idea here, okay? So the volume here is 2 pi r h dx. Be careful, I am integrating with respect to dx because the cylinders are surrounding each other, one another, like this. I will draw infinitely many of them. So they are moving along x-axis. That's the way how you decide whether it is dx or dy. Okay, so it is dx. Then I will uh, insert here the boundaries of x. So now, what is r, what is h? r is already seen as x here, and h is given by the curve, which has this equation. It is 1 plus x squared over 4. h is 1 plus x squared over 4. So this expression will give you the volume of the described three-dimensional object by using which technique? Cylindrical shells. Okay. So, uh, any questions now? Okay, let's see one more example. In this example, we are rotating around x-axis, okay? <clears throat> So uh, look at the region and rotate it around x-axis. What you will obtain, you will end up with some uh, picture like this. What does this pink line here? Let me give you a hint about how to draw the cylinders. Always you will draw your cylinders by drawing the height of it. By I mean, you will start drawing your cylinders by drawing the height. So once you draw the height, you can draw the symmetric part and complete it to a cylinder like that, okay? But why I draw the height not vertically, but horizontally in this case? Because it depends on the axis of rotation. Always the height of your cylinder should be parallel to the axis of rotation, okay? This is how you should draw them. Let me show you the previous case. Always to draw the correct cylinders, draw a line segment passing through your region, which is parallel to the axis of rotation. Again, draw a line segment passing through your region, which is parallel to axis of rotation. This is the correct way of drawing the height. Once you draw the height, the rest is just so simple. So straightforward, just complete it to a cylinder like that. Okay, now our cylinder is ready. I need to mark this point as an arbitrary point of y because the cylinder is horizontal over y-axis, kind of the rows of x and y are changed. So the radius of our cylinder is already given as y and the height is what we need to find out. Okay. Concentrate on this point on the curve. So what is the exiting point here? It is given by this curve, right? But uh, uh, um, it is given as, okay, this curve is given in the question as this one, three minus y square. So exiting point here is three minus y square. Let me change the color. So exiting point here is, 3 minus y squared. So the height is, in total, from here to here, it is 3. So here to here is given by 3 minus y squared. So what remains is your height, right? So height is 3 minus 3 minus y squared. You should just concentrate on your picture to uh, give the expression of height in terms of y. Then the volume is we are ready to compute the volume by cylindrical shells, 2 pi r, r h. This time, the cylinders are horizontal. They are moving along, along y axis, so everything should be with respect to dy. Look at the y boundaries of your region from 0 to square root 3. What is radius? Radius is already given as y here. What is height? Height we computed as 
3 minus y square. Yes? Yes, square root 3. Thank you for the correction. Thanks. OK, height is like that. Boundaries are like that. Radius is y. So this expression gives you the volume. OK? So please compare these two examples. In the first one, we used vertical cylinders. In the second one, we used horizontal cylinders. Why? Because the height of your cylinder should be parallel to axis of rotation. The height should be parallel to axis of rotation. OK, let's look at this one. We, we have a region there. We will rotate that region around, x, uh, around y axis. What will happen then? Something like this will happen, right? Three-dimensional object. Now, I want to explain a very crucial point. Um, every question can be solved by using any technique, OK? There is no such thing like, for this question, there is only one method to use. No, every method can be used for any question. But because of the nature of the given equations, it can be um, impossible to use. For example, here, it is not possible to use Washer method. In theory, it is possible. But in computing things in practice, it is very difficult. Let me show you why. So this, uh, after rotating and having this other side, you can slice this three-dimensional object into disks like that. And this method is Boucher method, right? Let's see why it doesn't work here. OK, let me indicate this point as an arbitrary point. Why? So let's uh, try to find out the inner radius, for example, right? This is the inner radius, exiting point. So I need to construct everything here in terms of y. You got used to the idea by now. So um, boundaries are from 0 to 5, I guess. This is 5. So y boundaries you can use. OK, outer radius is easy. It is fixed as. 3, but what about inner radius? Now, I need to express this inner radius in terms of which variable? Everything is with respect to y. Y. Exactly. In terms of y, I need to find out the expression. OK, um, we have a curve here. I need to concentrate on this point on this curve here. It, it has an equation, but can you solve x in terms of y from this equation? Which is very difficult. In fact, by hand, it is impossible. So let me write the explanation. Like we, we need to solve this equation in terms of y, which is in terms of y which is impossible because of the given because of the equation i mean it is a complicated equation so that we cannot solve x in terms of y if it would be a simpler equation it would be possible to solve x in terms of y so what your method will be working perfectly but it is not the case equation is complicated we cannot solve x in terms of y that's why so, Boucher method is not working here. Um, let's say not working, but don't use it. I mean, in theory, it is working, but there are problems about computation. So, do not use Boucher. Instead, use there is another technique, cylindrical shells. Oh, 
Okay, by using cylindrical shell, it will be much more easier. Let me show you. Let me draw the region again. We have such a region also on the other side. Rotate around y-axis. So this is the region. This is our axis of rotation, right? How do I draw the cylinders? I will draw a line segment passing through my region. This is too thick, sorry. Um, I got excited. Okay, I will draw a line segment passing through my region, which is parallel to the axis of rotation. This is the correct way of drawing your cylinders. And then once you have the height, you can easily complete your cylinder. Okay, so this is some arbitrary point X. So this is the radius of our cylinder. We know that the curve is given by such a strange equation. Uh, 9x over square root x cubed plus 9. So the height here is determined by this point on the curve. That's why for the height, we will be using the equation of the curve. Okay. We have radius, we have height, everything is ready. So the volume is, this is an automatic formula to write, 2 pi rh. I explained where it comes from. It comes from the surface area of the rectangle. Um, that, that comes from the cylinder. So everything is with respect to x, the x of course, because you um, your cylinders are moving along x-axis. This point is given as three in the question. So the boundaries of the integral is from zero to three. Reduce is already given as x and height is given by the curve. Nine x, x cubed plus nine. Okay, that's it. This is the construction of the volume. Okay. So let me indicate the shaded area is here. So any questions? If not, I want to show you this example. Uh, how many minutes? Okay. We have two more examples left, then I will let you go. So uh, this region is rotated around x-axis. I will be solving part A and C for this example. X-axis, okay? So then what happens? Something like this will happen, right? It is kind of an angel wings. And then we want to compute the uh, three volume of the, it, in fact, it is a three dimensional object. So the volume, I will be using cylindrical shells. Okay. How do we use it? Axis of rotation is X. Then go to your region, draw a line segment, which is parallel to X axis. This will be the height of your cylinder and draw the symmetric part and complete the cylinder. That's the simplest way of drawing the correct cylinders, okay? And then the volume, I can start computing. Two pi R H, is it the X or DY? The cylinders are growing through y-axis, right? They will surround each other horizontally through y-axis. So it is with respect to dy. That's why I need to name this point as an arbitrary point y. So the radius is already given as y. Now the height. For the height, these two points coming from the curves are important, right? So we need to express the difference between these two points in terms of y. So I need to look at the exiting points. Okay, I know the equations of the curves. Everything is kind of ready. This point is on this curve. So the exiting point here is y squared over two. And similarly, look at the equation of this curve. Here, this exiting point is given by the curve y to the power four minus y square over two, right? If I take the difference of these two x core components, I will find the height. So height is the difference of those exiting points. y square over two minus y to the power four minus y square over two. So that's it. Reduce is y, height is given as y square over two minus y to the power four divided by four, 
Let's go over to like that. What are the boundaries? We are taking the integral with respect to dy. That's why all you need to do is to look at y boundaries of your region. That's it. So the boundaries of the integral is from 0 to 2, looking at the y boundaries. OK. Um, let me see which one to solve. Choosing washer or shell method, I want to solve one question from this group. That's why I think for now I will skip this one. We, we solved very similar exercises. Let me try one from this group. Okay, first one. Choose the volume of the solid generated by revolving the region. We are computing volume obtained by revolving the region bounded by these two curves around each coordinate axis. It says I will, we can choose one for particular by using shell and washer. You see the same volume can be computed by using two different techniques. Okay, let's draw the picture now. Okay, y equals x and y equals x square. This is y equals x square. This is the line y equals x, okay? So this is the shaded region. Now, I will rotate it around x or y axis. I don't know, we can choose anyone, any of them. Okay, let's choose x or y, I don't know. Let's choose y, doesn't matter. So after revolving around y axis, you will obtain some three dimensional object like that. Now, imagine this three dimensional object, we will compute its volume by using either shell method or washer method. They will both work this time. Um, I mean, in this question, there is no best way to choose. They are both working perfectly. Let me show you. Uh, but remember, sometimes we are not lucky as this question because remember this question, we were we tried to use washer technique, but because of this complicated equation, we couldn't solve x in terms of y. But here, our equations are so nice that we can easily solve x's in terms of y. So washer method and also cylindrical method will work perfectly, both of them. So what does this mean? For a given example, for a given volume, it can be computed by using any method you like. But while computing, if you have difficulties to find solve some equation, you can switch techniques to one to another. Okay, I talk too much. Voiture method works like you slice your three-dimensional object into rings like that, right? Okay, these are the slices. Now, I choose an arbitrary y, and this is the inner radius. It comes from this exiting point. Look at the line equation. So it is just y. What is the outer radius? It, it comes from this point on the second curve. Right, this point. So exiting point of this point is, you can easily solve x in terms of y here. Just square root of y. Okay, so I am ready to construct the volume by using Poisson method. Because we have inner radius, we have outer radius. This is the smaller radius for me, this is the bigger radius for me. So the volume goes like pi, r outer radius minor, minus r inner radius, dy or dx. They are moving along y-axis, so dy. That's why we need to also look at this uh, uh, interval over on y-axis. So we need to find this intersection point. It is easy, it is just one. Those two curves intersect at one, so this point is also one. That's why the boundaries of the integral are from zero to one, and then 
outer radius comes from square root of y. Inner radius is just y, comes from the line, remember? Square root of y square, y square, dy from zero to one. If you do this integral, you will find the desired volume. Now, I will compute the very same volume. Everything is the same, object is the same by using cylindrical shells. Just to show you the uh, solutions at the same place. So let's apply cylindrical shells to the same question. You can use any technique you like, okay? It's up to you, either washer or cylindrical shells, totally up to you. This is y equals x, this is y equals x squared. So we rotated it around x axis, I'm uh, sorry, y axis to obtain this three dimensional thing. Now, I am using shells technique. That's why I will draw cylinders. Are they vertical or horizontal? I don't know, I will look at the axis of rotation. But this is our axis of rotation, right? To draw the cylinders, I will draw a line segment passing through my region, which is parallel to axis of rotation. That's the height of the cylinder. So draw the symmetric part, just complete your cylinder. So these are the cylinders, cylindrical shells that will help me to construct the integral. I need to indicate this arbitrary point as x, so volume by cylindrical shells goes like, this is an automatic formula, two pi r. Is it dx or dy? Which one? The cylinders are surrounding each other and they are growing through, they are moving along which axis? X-axis. So you need to choose the x here, okay? That's something important. Which two pi r h, sorry dx. And then now it's time to express radius and the height in terms of x. And radius is already given here as x, right? Radius is x. What is height? Height is the difference between these two curves, between these two points. So this part is uh, just, sorry, x squared, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It is y equals x squared curve. So this part is x squared. Let me use another color. So from here to here, x squared. And from here to here, it is on the line, right? It is just x. So the difference of these two, this is x squared, this is x. If you take the difference, you will find the height. So let's write this down. x minus x squared is your height. Now what about the boundaries of integral? Boundaries of your region on x-axis is, the intersection point is one, we already discussed this before. So it is from zero to one. Okay, the volume is given like that. If you want to use cylindrical shells technique, okay? Any questions now? I hope everything is okay. Okay, then um, let me see. I will just show you a very short. Hmm. Let me see. Okay, I will just show you a very, very quick example. Um, I will just construct it by my, myself to be quicker. Okay, what if... Okay, again, the, related to this part, I am just continuing over this part. What if we... Uh, what if we used the same region again, but we revolve it not around y-axis, but some line? Let me draw what I am trying to tell you. <laughs> okay, so the same region, 
you know, these curves. This is y equals x square, y equals x. I don't want to rotate it around y axis, but around this line. Then what happens? We didn't do such thing with Shell's technique, so I don't want to leave without showing this to you. Let's say this is x equals minus one line, okay? Then what will happen? You will, of course, obtain the symmetric uh, region over there. So you will obtain some very big three-dimensional object like that. And then let's try to compute the uh, volume by using Shell's method again. It is very similar, just the radius is changing here. You will draw the cylinders again by uh, drawing the height parallel to axis of rotation. These are your cylinders now, right? And then okay, this is the cylinder. So uh, again, you will indicate this point as x, but be careful since the center of the cylinder is on the axis of rotation. This is not radius anymore. It is much more bigger because you re rotated around some far away line. Like that's why your radius is much more bigger now. So this part is X. This is of length one because this is X equals minus one line. So the radius is this much in this case. So what is the radius here? X plus one. And the height is the same. Height is the difference of these two points. Height is the difference of these two points, x minus x squared. So let me compute quickly. I mean, construct the integral quickly. 2 pi r h d. Everything is the same except the radius. You just make a bigger cylinder with a bigger radius. So radius is not x, but x plus 1. Height is the same. And oh, and the integration of the, um, sorry, boundaries of the integral is again the same. Always you will look at the boundaries of your region for the boundaries of the integral. Don't mix your mind. Just look at the boundaries of your region. It is from zero to one again, as it is before. So only the, let me, I mean, let me uh, emphasize the radius is a bit bigger now. But still, the integral is with respect to x. Everything is with respect to x and so on. OK, that's the last thing that I wanted to show you what happens when you change the axis of rotation in cylindrical shells. Just radius is changing a bit. That's it. If no questions, I just want to stop here.